Ben, for goodness sake, put some clothes on. We've got visitors. <laughs> Sorry, it just always, it always makes me laugh, the silence, and then you just animate into life all of a sudden, like, Wait, hello, we're here, welcome. It's, uh, I'll, never, I'll, ne- I'll never not get used to that. Really? Very funny. Ben, what I'm hearing is you making up excuses when you should be putting clothes on because we have a special guest on the show today, Triv from Trivial Theatre. How are you doing, man? You know what? I will say, Ben, you look great. Like, honestly, like, head to toe, forget clothes. Forget what Dan says. You would well, just I mean, it goes be without you. saying. I mean, so no one needed to say that. It's just like one of those obvious things. Oh, I know. I know, right? I mean, fab- <laughs> fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. <laughs> I mean, as somebody who has actually seen Ben naked, yeah, impressive. I didn't know he had a six-pack, but you live and learn. (laughs) One excellent note to start the recording on. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) Um, So, welcome, everybody, to the comedy dining experience, uh, the Halloween special, where today we're going to be looking at the Vincent Price classic, classic air quotes, um, The Monster Club. Um, And we're not doing it alone. We have Triv on the show today. Um, Triv, how are you doing? You know what? I can't complain. I barely get invited to clubs, and the fact that I'm being invited to a monster club just fills me with such joy (laughs) I can't even tell you, especially with you two amazing gents. Oh, well, thank you very much. It's very kind. You you shall definitely reappear. Um, don't put her in the pit, Ben. Make a note of that. Do not put her in the pit. Flattery um, will get you everywhere in life. <laughs> really everywhere. <laughs> um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your YouTube channel and what you do? Uh, so I do, I have a theatre called Trivial Theatre and uh, here on YouTube. And I do random, obscure and straight up bad movies um, there is a little bit of emphasis on trivia, but basically I kind of just uh, enjoy making, you know, giving unique, fun summaries of movies and that you wouldn't normally see, and uh, then giving you kind of some of the facts behind them and a couple of my own opinions, which might be good or might be bad depending upon how you look at it. So that seems like a pretty, pretty nice, neat summary. You've you've clearly done this before. Well, you know, I, I'm so excited to get to be part of the Monster Club. I just, I can't, I can't, I could go into a long-winded section of what I do, but what would be the fun in that? Oh, well, you know, I mean, there's there's still going to be plenty of time to deep dive, I'm sure. Oh, I'm excited. I'm rubbing my avatar hands together to uh, to get into this bad boy. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, ben, have you seen the Monster Club before? Just before I hit play, I, I can't remember nope. if you said you had or not. You've I'd, not seen nope. the Monster Club before. Didn't, did, did, I hadn't even heard of it until you said we were doing it. <laughs> so didn't do any research didn't look it up this is all just like all i know about it is it's it's a film that's um that's about 90 minutes long <laughs> right well you're in for a treat then it's the extent of extent of my knowledge you know as much as i do then we are queued up on a black screen um 12 seconds in uh the version that i had was the network blu-ray release ooh fancy um which had um an itv global logo at the start but we've skipped past that just because eh, and most other versions of this don't have that logo so we don't want to throw it out um so if you want to sync your copy up we will get this party rolling in three two one and play do you, reckon, do you reckon anyone actually does sync the copies up, or do they just listen to the nonsense? Ben, I'm so sad that I have actually listened to our bloody New Year commentary in sync, and it does work. So at least one person, then, that's good. <laughs> just the one. <laughs> hey, we're going places, Ben. We're going places. A sword and sorcery. Ooh, production. ooh, it's a sword and sorcery. Yes. Are they wearing sandals, though? Because if there's not sandals, then I think they're kind of called bullshit. No, unfortunately, we got rid of the Romans around about 1978 because they started to, quote, stink up the joint. Uh. <laughs> oh, I was called a cradle demon when I when I came out. Hmm. Everyone's in this, Jesus. Oh, yeah. This, yeah. Uh, this had the entire cast of um, the British Rada for 1983. <laughs> Extra special <laughs> guest star. That's a good credit. I wonder how the special guest star yes. feels about that. <laughs> you be 40. Be, I'm sure they feel sort of special. <laughs> Get a bit of red, red wine going on in this in this joint. Oh, you better believe it. Is that John Williams <laughs> and UB40? Together at last. Together at last. The Mac and me team what? up you never knew you needed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is the third sign of the apocalypse, though, just so you're aware. <laughs> 
<laughs> yep, the, the, the fourth seal is now broken. Bow for May is love. Ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow, the bags under his eyes could tell stories. Stories I would rather not hear. <laughs> Just like looking in a mirror, yes. really, to be honest. Oh, it's Bella Lugosi. <laughs> He's it's not the ghost dead. of Vincent Price. That too. <laughs> but the hand is pure Bella Lugosi. Oh, yeah. He's clearly been taking lessons from Hungarian actors. I can't yes. see or hear Bell, um, Vincent Price about h- hearing that insane like mashup song he sent me years ago where it's just him going, pork chaps, pork chaps, <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> That's one of my favourites. <laughs> I have that on in my car sometimes, <laughs> just to confuse bystanders. Chicken livery, nice. chicken livery, steak, <laughs> steak, beer, ketchup, fried <laughs> rice, chunky peanut butter, bananas. <laughs> <laughs> so did Vincent Price just bite that guy just to get his wallet? Um, I mean, it's a novel way of robbery. I'll give him that. I mean, if Vincent Price came up to me and said, I'm going to bite you, give me your wallet, um, I don't think I'd say no. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a great plot line. I didn't bite you deep so you won't turn into a vampire. That's up there with, I drank the poison, but I only had a tiny sip. (laughs) I (laughs) I did not inhale. (laughs) And if you take a tiny sip, you're all right. Yeah. (laughs) So is this a, um, what, what's the fancy French word that I can't remember and trying to remember to look smart? Portmanteau ben. or? Ben is thinking of the word portmanteau. Thanks, Dan. I'm so Ooh. glad you're here. <laughs> this is my ASMR voice. I use it occasionally to be very, very deep oh. and sensual. <laughs> <laughs> Cara mia. Well, you're a ASM- your ASMR voice and Vincent Price on screen is just... I can't tell you what it's doing for me at the moment. <laughs> hey, get, get get in the queue, love. Ben, did you hear that? We're going to have to order more plastic wrap and we're going to have to call the vicar again. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is such a charged commentary. It's far too exciting for me. I'm going to have to step away for a minute. <laughs> this, get, yes. I was gonna say get, some is, get some air. <laughs> usually these commentaries are so low energy, but we've we've come into this caffeinated or something. I don't know. But well, the energy normally, is high today. They're normally quite charged. It normally ends with, with me and Dan engaging in quite a violent sexual act, so I'd say it's fairly used to it. Triv, have you ever seen the movie <laughs> Women in Love? <laughs> Uh, I can't say that I have. I imagine it's what's on screen right now, the guy in a mask trying to choke himself out. Um, Yeah, pretty much. There's a scene where Oliver Reed and another actor whose name escapes me fight naked in front of a fireplace. Well, that's how (laughs) usually the commentaries end with me and Ben. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I got no issues with that, as long as I can record it for posterity. (laughs) Is this the uh, UB40 song? Oh no, this isn't uh, this isn't UB40. I can't remember the name of this band. Um, what I love though is that all of the monsters are just clearly actors in Halloween masks. It's not like it's supposed to yes. be. They could have done a nice gimmick where the monsters were wearing Halloween masks or something to, you know, kind of explain away how cheap it looks. No, these masks are all supposed to be monsters. <laughs> well, to be fair, the Star Wars wow. the Star Wars cantina what? scene is mostly blokes in shitty Halloween masks. So, let's press it. Hey, when did they get that footage of me and Ben drinking? <laughs> <laughs> well you know speaking of star wars we've got uh princess leia buns on that chick in the red <laughs> oh yeah so do you think this is what the 80s were like in clubs in in the uh, english highlands or the english uh countryside god i hope so <laughs> <laughs> you never see this if that's the one... case i am totally going back there <laughs> This is how people describe the 80s on those, you know, I heart the 80s documentaries you see sometimes. Oh, it was crazy, man. We were all just wearing you know, Halloween masks and getting bit by old men. It was fucking brilliant. Also, we did a lot of coke. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. The tables were all coffins and uh, all the waiters had pointy teeth. We used to have a saying back in the 80s, if Vincent Price wasn't there, it wasn't a party, man. I could see that. 
And if he's not talking monsters, then there's clearly something wrong with Vincent Price. Yes. You have a fake Vincent Price. Please return and ask for a refund. When you say that, that was a real problem in the UK back in the 80s. You know, so many counterfeit prices ended up going to the uh, incinerator due to, you know, safety (sighs) issues. He looks a bit like Beck. God, what a waste. Mm -hmm. Was this an early sort of thing for Beck, the musician, before he became like voice (laughs) of a generation? He did the OST for uh, the Monster Club. (laughs) True. Did he sing into the vibrator, into a, a very thin, slim vibrator back in the day as well? Very sensual looking uh, microphone. Yes. <laughs> that yes. was actually part of his act. Um, it went down particularly well when he played in the clubs of Amsterdam. Ah, sweet. They missed a trick. Why didn't they have, like, no, Monster no, Mash on? That would be have been more smart, but I suppose that's such a cliched song. Exactly. They wanted to think outside the box. That, that would have made it perfect. They... Yeah. It was a great. It was a graveyard smash, after all. Mm. And it yes, caught on in a flash. So. <laughs> no, it didn't. <laughs> that was big monster lying to you, Ben. It didn't catch on. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> give it time. Give it time. Like the greatest things in life, it takes time for the really good things to catch on. Well, that oh, was yeah. a sumptuous meal, wasn't it? <laughs> Jambalaya. Yes. <laughs> I'm liking the red light. I that's absolutely gives you no idea about what's coming up at all. Like it's just a really well placed random red Extremely light. Extremely subtle. <laughs> oh yeah, hundred percent. I can see the production crew now just stood around going, "Boss, we've got all these green lights. What are we going to do with them?" I don't know. Mix them with the red. <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas in whatever month this is. <laughs> Christmas in Spookyville. Hey, look, it's my family tree. <laughs> <laughs> ah, now you see, Ben, this is the this is the spooky family tree. Um, everybody can be charted on this. Uh, according to this, I may be a wergu. <laughs> mm. There's a lot of wergu in the background there. Mm. I'll get a mop. I kept thinking there was a swat sticker behind his <laughs> face then for a minute. Or maybe that's just my, oh, shit, there is. my diseased oh, mind, maybe, reading too much ben. into it. We told you at the start of the commentary, do not incite a Nazi uprising. <laughs> hey, I'm following the you rules. You tell me this every time, and I keep telling you every time, no, I want to do that. <laughs> Nothing good can come of it, no matter how you're much the, you want the Fourth Reich back. You're not the boss of me, my, and no one, my Fuhrer, I mean Dan. <laughs> well, and no one comes well if you incite a Nazi revolution either. Very true. <laughs> Very true. Whoa, Dan just went about 10 miles away. <laughs> he did, he did. See, he's trying to distance himself with trying you. To escape from the film. I fell down a well and I'm now moving away from Ben, who is now a confirmed Nazi and should be avoided at all costs. Oh, shit. A, confer- a confirmed uh. Nazi. <laughs> I'm enjoying the conversation, I'm enjoying the movie, and then Nazis have to come up into this bullshit. Ain't that, what the hell? Ain't that always the case these days? <laughs> Uh, it is. You can take your wergu roots and go piss off. <laughs> Fun fact: we wer we wergus find that highly offensive. <laughs> you know that painting, the painting of the wergu there that it just zoomed in on. Yeah. The actor yeah. that they cast in the film to play the wergu, who's going to come up shortly, they painted that picture before they hired him. It's frighteningly accurate. Really? Yeah. They basically they did the painting first oh and then they God. hired him. And it was only when they got together on the set, they looked at both things and went, fucking hell, that, that is, they're identical. <laughs> <laughs> That's so amazing. This Ooh, Marmalade, my favorite. This marmalade film's o- from the looks of it. This film's OST is rocking. It is. It's It's pretty pumping. <laughs> this is quite a forgotten price yes. film. Not a lot of people know about this one, but it's actually surprisingly well made. I mean, it's not like Theatre of Blood, but it's it's fun. Right. So it's somewhere between Tingler and Theatre yeah. of Blood. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that, that, that'll be the box quote. Like- we'll put that on the box. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Do you think he's compensating because that paper is rather thick and girthy? Do you think he's compensating for um, something? Yes, he actually has a um, smaller newspaper wrapped inside of that newspaper that he doesn't want the missus to see. 
that says more about you than the film. That's this fair. film is like a raw. This film is like a raw shark test. What 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 you see it projects your inner self is is my reading of it. <laughs> One looks into mm. the monster club and the monster club looks back. <laughs> oh shit! I'm I'm fucked then. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the John Williams at the start of the credits, is that because there's like five John Williams in the film scoring world, confusingly enough. So is that John Williams, the Star Wars guy, or John Williams, one of the other pricks? Ben, you have raised an interesting question. Allow me to investigate. (laughs) You cheat. You should know this beforehand. You should have done your homework. I'm using Ziggy. (laughs) I was going to say, the way it was... The way it was uh, referenced, I assume that it was a well thought out beforehand question. <laughs> no, no, no. As if we pre plan these things. Bloody hell. I, I've pre written every <laughs> single thing I say, including responses to what you two say. Every, it's all pre written, including this bit I'm saying now. It, quite frankly, and, and it's this a wonder bit. these actually end up recorded, let's be honest. And this bit. And this bit. And this bit. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking for John Williams scores in 1981. <laughs> I was going to say, if it's a John William that cleans out the bathrooms and does uh, <laughs> film scoring on this side, I'm going to be rather pissed off. Let's have a look. John, John Williams, the street guitarist, not the composer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> John Williams, hey, the street cleaner. Don't be... <laughs> this is an early version of Hoarders. <laughs> A spooky version. Yes. Well, I think every version of Hoarders is a little spooky, but, you know. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. oh no, his biggest crime. Wow. He just looks mildly passable. <laughs> <laughs> As I turn and look at the camera like that, and that's always the sound that accompanies it. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the things I, I love about this. They try and make out that he looks like an absolute freak, but like, I've seen worse. I am worse. <laughs> was that the imp- was that the idea of the scene? Because I didn't get that at all. It just looked like a man looked up and it went. Yeah. This is <laughs> yes. this is the thing. The whole implication is that she thinks he's absolutely like terrifyingly hideous. <laughs> I mean, he's got bulgy eyes and a bad suit, but other than that. I mean, she's not dressed any better, really. No. I'm, I'm In a so way, she's sorry. worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, lady, that I do not meet your standards of being a solid 10 all the time. She's body shaming him. <laughs> Fuck her. That's just not right. I mean, if you must, just, uh, you know, try to keep the noise to a minimum. We're trying to riff a movie here. <laughs> oh, right. I found he d- him. He doesn't look that bad. Like you say. You know, well, if you had statues looking at you all the time, maybe you'd have that same expression. You know, <laughs> give him a bit of a, a tan, you know, maybe a boob job. I think he'd look passable. <laughs> he just kind of looks like Chris Kattan a little bit. Mm. <laughs> um, so this is the John Williams who did The Deer Hunter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah. Okay. I don't think it's the Star Wars John Williams, but... Yeah. I bet he's got so much work over the years from people thinking he's the Star Wars John Williams. Oh yeah, John Williams, great. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, he just turns up. He just rocks up with a guitar. All right, lads. <laughs> See, this it's is the me, thing. John. I had the exact opposite problem. I went to Star Wars, John Williams, and went, John Williams, writer of the soundtrack for the Monster Club, and he said no, and then I didn't hire him. <laughs> All right, that's what we're doing today then. We do the film. All right, let's go. <laughs> I got me banjo here, fucking Rocky now, lads. <laughs> <laughs> funny i never knew john williams was cockney <laughs> everybody is cockney on this show ah, Gov. And pears. hey Cor- even me Cor- especially Blimey. you everyone in this chat is now <laughs> an honorary sweet. cockney cool oh Blimey. fuck yes rookie that's something cockney <laughs> said <I> <laughs> of course on- there once was a man from nantucket is as close as i got <laughs> of course on winter afternoons i like to go into the garden and feed the birds while the cat watches wow it's kind of my thing it's not every day you see a pussy in broad daylight whoa <laughs> you've clearly never well, been I'm to the west saying. midlands <laughs> <laughs> okay that coat is hideous yeah it's, it's far uh, more it's hideous than me... he is it... i i agree like she's not even matching her shades of pink there was actually she a, calls herself put together. There was actually an infamous moment where a small child had to be carried out of the theatre after staring at that and accidentally having a massive seizure. 
<laughs> you know what? I can see that happening. That shot of the cat zooming in would make a really good meme. Just put like a caption over it. You know, just like <laughs> me me when mum tells me to take the rubbish out. Me. And then just zooms in on the cat or something. <laughs> I just love that they clearly threw the cat into the shot. It wasn't even like... <laughs> So the cat has no significance or relevance to the overall overarching (laughs) theme or story of this segment of the film. Definitely so. (laughs) Well, and everyone that was associated with throwing the cat ended up dead later because, (laughs) you know, cats kill indiscriminately. Egyptians. Yes, that too. You threw our royal lord and now you must die. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so is this like Phantom of the Opera then, so where think- she kind of falls for him even though he's hideous? Um, we'll find out shortly, Ben. On the so it is like so it is experience. like Phantom of the Opera, is what you're saying. Um, <laughs> sort. Mm, I'm not going to spoil it, but not. So quite. it is Phantom of the Opera, is what you're saying. I, I'm not going to spoil it, Ben. Don't don't even try. You can, you can, you can, well, there was a bit of mask in there, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can buy me fine wines and liquors and it won't change my mind. I am not spoiling That's this what... movie for you. It's an experience. You've got to live through it. But Dan, it's got my heart pounding. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> is your bosom heaving, Ben? Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> when is it not heaving? That's a sign of... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Hey, my my breast is always heaving, so take that how you You're not allowed on this commentary unless you have heaving breasts. Just ask Dan. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there for that one. <laughs> the question is, does the chick on screen have a heaving breast? Um, I don't know. She's covering them with flowers. It doesn't matter. She's a judgmental that's cow. True. Very true. Yes, she is. <laughs> yes. Now, here's a question. Does he use a straight razor on his hair to get the part perfect? <laughs> Um, no, he actually has a fitting fitted at the top of every door, and as he walks through, it perfectly parts it. It's like a like a metal wedge that he just as he walks through the door, it perfectly parts. Damn, I missed the eighties for technology I like know, that. It was a revelation. Don't say you don't say oh, yeah, don't definitely. say you know, Dan, like you were there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you don't remember it, you were probably there. So. <laughs> He had too much coke mm. back then. Or, or, not, or not enough, depending on your <laughs> interpretation. Oh yes, whilst, we're, that is whilst true. we're here, it might be a seemingly good time <laughs> to mention that I am enjoying a delicious Dr Pepper and vodka during this film, um, and I'm eating a delicious packet Ooh. of Jaffa cakes. I wonder when the cat comes back. <sighs> so pissed about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely best character in the whole movie, though, so far. Most well, sketched out, obviously. He got top billing, you know, he outshone oh, yeah. Vincent Price. <laughs> oh, there you go. What about the pigeons? Did they get pretty high uh, No, but the, they oh. were destroyed after filming. God, I came up with the worst duck joke then ever, and I'm not going to say it because it was just too. It, there's, there's cringe, and then there's just. I'm, uh, no. <laughs> it's been like 90% of what I've said has been massive cringe. <laughs> yes, but in a likable way. Uh oh. Aww. So you're just saying that, though. Yes, I am. No, not no, the I'm pigeons. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Oh shit! Oh my god! Ah! No! You little bitch! You bastard! <laughs> and I do it again. Not my daughter, <laughs> you bitch! <laughs> you turned your back for one second, and I pounced. Yes. See, he loved him. the The cat loved the pigeon too much. <laughs> How dare you! That pigeon was just like a pigeon to me. <laughs> Well, who was it? Tesla? Was it was it Nikola Tesla that had a, an affair with a with a pigeon, or really liked pigeons or I'm, something? D- what? Sorry, hang on. Whoa, I've that. never heard that. I've never <laughs> heard like, this. Whoa, stop the commentary. Hang on. <laughs> Tesla <laughs> fucked a pigeon. <laughs> no, I don't think he fucked a pigeon. But I think that he had like he had a pigeon that he kept, and I'm pretty sure they had a special relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the pigeon gave him a blaster. Not in a fucking way, but <laughs> possibly. Somehow. I don't know. Revelation. He claimed a pigeon as his wife. I mean, it's a good job that I, that's one of the theories. It's a good job they never told us this in school because he could have sued us. Yeah, we were just taught he was the fancy lightning man. When did the pigeon? <laughs> when did the, <laughs> he is the fancy lightning man. When did the pigeon Roger He's super start? eclectic, though. <laughs> oh my god, the, the cat, the, the cat's on fire. <laughs> Is there a time when cats aren't on fire? While you were going on about I mean, pigeon love, pigeon shagging, the, the cat spontaneously combusted. 
Wasn't that a song by by Morris <laughs> Minor and the time, Pigeon Love? <laughs> <laughs> that that is a normal response when I bring up uh, you know Tesla and his pigeon wife. Even Tesla when he was dying, his pigeon they... fuckery. You know, for the <laughs> for the visuals for this um, video, rather than just a shot of the poster or whatever, can you just do a montage of all the zoom ins on the cat because there's about twenty five of them in the first few minutes. <laughs> we'll just have a photo of the cat that slowly zooms in. But a special emphasis in. on the last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even on his burning fucking corpse, they had to they couldn't stop zooming in. <laughs> hey, the 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 cat was not on fire. The cat was just in heat. <laughs> uh, well, if that thing had nine lives, he just spent them all. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, no, you're not. Uh, you're not wrong. <laughs> so back to pigeon fucking. Well, now everyone's gonna know where his. <laughs> So did he put it all the way in, or was it just the tip? What are we talking about here? Is this? I mean, you, if you're talking about a normal, a Norman, hu- a normal human male, fucking a pigeon that probably has a tiny, tiny hole. I'm thinking that probably doesn't no. work. If you fuck the pigeon, well, it was totally metaphorical. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> ben, oh, shit. get me to what the aviary. <laughs> to my, quick, Ben, to my now, archives. Be, I'm, I'm gonna. <laughs> See, now the problem is that I'm going to go on the BBC News website <laughs> and there's going to be like a rash of pigeon fuckings <laughs> and I'm going to have to tell somebody about it because of the, I started this shit. <laughs> a rash of pigeon fuckings. That's ridiculous. We call it a swarm of pigeon fuckings. I thought it was a feathering of Better pigeon than fuckings. we calling it a murder. <laughs> we, call it a, we call it a flock of pigeon fuckings. <laughs> or is it a, is a pigeon flocking? <laughs> just, just call it that. <laughs> Do you have a t-shirt that says, I've been flocked? <laughs> well, right, we're not even 20 minutes into this film. We've already invented a new deviant sexual practice that will be working its way to Urban Dictionary shortly. Yesterday, some hooligans <laughs> fucked a pigeon in Shaftesbury. In Glastonbury. <laughs> the pigeon was quoted as saying, coo, coo. <laughs> Very nice. We need the deeper questions here. Like, did he use lube? Was spit on the menu? What? <laughs> What are the logistics? Did he hold each wing? Did he wing? spit on the menu? Did he hold them wings akimbo, or did he hold it like a well-packed piece of beef? What's was the, he a gentle the or fairly aggressive one? They just did a doggy style. <laughs> <laughs> For going by traditional animal standards of fucking, I'm assuming it was behind like doggy style. As far as lube, you know, you're talking about the 1890s or the, you know, that late 1800s, early 1900s, or early 1800s, and early ni- or late 1900s, ni- <laughs> you're talking late ni- 1800s, early 1900s. I'm pretty sure that they didn't have lube back then, so they probably just used straight gasoline. Of course, I forgot to check my traditional bestiality handbook from the 19th century. <laughs> Let's, let's see what we've you, got here. They used whale blubber, okay? They they went straight whale blubber. That that's how you did it back in the eighteen nineties. Amb- Ambergris, give or take. Imagine if you got like there you a, go. There imagine you go. if you got like an angry email now from Tesla's estate, being like, "We are suing you for defamation of character for our just many like, many hundred years old dead man." I'd just be like, "Okay, mate, but prove he didn't fuck the pigeon, though. Prove it, though." <laughs> Why you why s- did you become a, a sort of very heavy sort of Rastafarian accent there, Dan? I didn't. Was... I went for I went for council estate chav, Ben. It's it's an easy way to kind of transition between the two. Just digging a hole, Dan. Or fucking the hole, depending on your okay, view so, of it. So so far, apart from insulting all of our previous guests, pigeon fuckers, um the estate of Nikola Tesla, <laughs> council estate, working class yobos and Jamaicans. What else have we got? For the next hour. Uh, well, we talked about pussy. Oh yeah, we also insulted pigeon. cat lovers <laughs> <laughs> and pigeon lovers. Dick, Dick, dastardly Tesla and his flying <laughs> electricity machines. Catch don't that you, pigeon! Don't you bring Dick dastardly into this? He would never fuck a pigeon. Uh, I beg to differ. Have you not seen the deleted scenes? <laughs> on the arrow, latest Arrow Blu-ray of Dick Dastardly and his flying machines, I oh. b- 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 look carefully. Oh god, I've just thought of the triple X cut of Catch the Pigeon, and now I feel sad. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> what are you? What was it? Clunk? What are you doing? Clunk? Put him down. Clunk, click every trip, man. Oh god, <laughs> you're watching the Monster Club. Wow. My <laughs> the my pigeon fucking. <laughs> 
here, records, archives of every pigeon I have ever befroved. Befro- <laughs> whatever. Don't care. <laughs> He's going to be the next person up on my strange obsession. <laughs> and just behind that door, the carcasses of every pigeon that I have betrothed. <laughs> It's just one big Akira-sized oh, homogenous <laughs> lump. Very salty. Very salty. Is that what salty. you call it these days? Oh. Well, Tesla apparently also hated per- <laughs> uh, pearls and refused to talk a woman who wore More them. More Dr. Pepper has been spilled. So. <laughs> oh, no. It was uh, Ben. Ass. It was Ben saying. <laughs> That's what Look you down. call it. Look, Dan, there's an arse on the screen. Arse. Oh, you missed it. <laughs> Dan, you missed it. There was, there was an arse on the screen. It was really good. How good was it? Was it made of marble? It was. It was all right. Six out of ten. Oh yeah, that's a proper nice marble. Everything arse. is made of marble. <laughs> <laughs> even even the pigeons. <laughs> that was a hard night in more ways than one. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh, yeah, no doubt. The bigger question is: Have they had sticky time fun yet? <laughs> Unfortunately, not, because she finds him revoltingly hideous because he's only a seven out of ten. Yeah. You have one you have one bag under your eye. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> to the incinerator now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're just another fake Vincent Price. Get the hell out. <laughs> Why do they all wear masks? The, the idea is they're all supposed to be wearing masks because they're all too hideous to be seen unmasked. They all look fine. That's true. <laughs> what why do their masks look like they're made of cum? Um <laughs> Let me introduce you to the estate of Nikola Tesla, Trev. <laughs> it was a side hustle from the pig- <laughs> It was a side hustle from the pigeons. We don't go into the detail of it. They lasted about ten years and then they started rotting and becoming rather unpleasant. Some people preferred them that way. Uh, Personally, I found them disgusting. Yeah. I'm sure they'd get to smell pretty quickly too. Yeah, well the smell was what made people buy them. So, you know, each to their own. Uh. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. This is kind of like if Eyes Wide Shut was made on a budget of about 10p. <laughs> yeah. It's very similar. Well, you know, back in the seven, back in the 80s, 10p took you a lot further than it does today. <laughs> well, accounting for inflation, hands. that's about yeah. 1 million billion and, billion squillion? Yeah, that's an official number. Oh, <laughs> I f- shit, I forgot to carry the one. 1 billion 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 trillion... B- 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 you, you know, Ben, it's Which so is an bizarre. actual currency. <laughs> It's so bizarre because the first number you said was on IMDb and was actually correct to the penny. But then when you actually adjusted for inflation properly and carried the one, the number changed on IMDb and you were perfectly correct again. Oh, what a twat. Wow. Yeah. He's an influencer. He was. <laughs> it's, it's like that Twilight Zone episode where that with that kid who can make things happen just by thinking it, only a bit more shit. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Instead of going into the cornfield, they end up in Nik- they end up as Nikola Tesla's pigeons. Oh god. <laughs> I Nikola think something Tes- <laughs> I think something sinister's about to happen in the film. Yes. What was your first clue? <laughs> Nikola Tesla, the infamous child pigeon fucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the title of this um, commentary. We normally have a tagline across the top of the screen. That'll be uh, oh, that'll god. be the, the tagline. Uh, a small pigeon was put in the shuttle with Tesla by mistake. The spokesman said, this is the one thing we didn't want to happen. <laughs> that normally happens when I come on to do commentaries. It doesn't matter where I end up. That always ends up being the tagline. You know, I caught up with your, your uh, chat about the uh, Santa Claus and the ice cream bunny the other night, and I was surprised by the amount of pigeon fucking okay. mentioned in that one. So, you know, I'm just saying... <laughs> Is this is this a thing? Oh, I mean, no. I've watched your channel and you don't mention that very much, but when you guest on other shows, is this a thing? Is this? <laughs> it tends to be. It just. It, I can't even help it. It just starts coming out. You know, I can't. Yeah, there, there's just. That's I can't Tesla control said. myself. I have been to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us back to sticky fun time. <laughs> Prin- look, Princess Anne is stealing his archives, or whatever's happening. No. Oh no. Rumbled. Price is up. The gold digging cow. <laughs> oh, who is he? Who is he? Oh, <gasps> God, it's just him. Oh, my God, he's so ugly. Ugly, Bob, put the backpack on your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he kind of looks like Lon Chaney a little bit. He does. Ah. See? A fan- phantom of the opera. 
Yeah. Oh well, there it you go. All ties together. You talked. You said that earlier, and I'm a I, I'm a total twat and missed it, so I apologize. <laughs> You can take everything you want. I don't care about the jewels (laughs) and the money. Just leave my pigeons alone. They're all I truly love. (laughs) In a deep, sensual way. Yes. (laughs) You do kind of look like a pigeon. Oh. Oh. You're horrible. (laughs) Your eyes are a little bit dark. (laughs) Your nostrils flare when you whistle. It upsets me. We could never be. racist. She is. Oh, no. He's using his cat melting power. <laughs> That's not going to do any good. Wow. He's a human being. Oh god! Oh dude, he needs to moisturize. He uh, actually won Mr. Sexy Lips of uh, Great Britain, 1981, for that shot. So um... did he just kiss? Did he just kiss <laughs> the camera? He did. <laughs> Sli- slipped the a little the tongue f- in there before they cut. A... The rest of the film just has a smudge <laughs> over it. <laughs> Damn it! I hate it when that happens, and it happens so often. Hey, you can say what you like about him. He may have been really deeply hurt, but at least he gave her a cloak. Oh no, my creepy wife is yes. back. <laughs> I think actually she came with the cloak. How was hmm. your creepy dinner party, creepy wife? Did you manage to steal all of our creepy <laughs> artifacts so we could make creepy money? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hair's straight now. That's not good. Uh-oh. Ah! Oh my god, she's she she's been playing rugby. <laughs> did, did her face melt? Um, I believe his sonic whistling powers melted her face. Ah, so it's a typical Friday night then. Oh yeah, standard Brit. If you go, in, if you live in Britain, this is a standard pub night out. Oh, Friday. I was going to say that, or she caught some kind of oozing sickness. Friday, drink twelve pints and have face melt. Saturday, writes pie and recovery. That's how it works over here. There you go. Nice. Well, it's mm. good to hear. You know, it's not something I ran into while I was there, but it's good to know that it started. Oh, yeah. Well, it was because before it used to be drink 12 pints and kill each other. So we found that the face melting was mm. much more efficient. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's less clean up. Mm. Why couldn't she love me for my normal creepy self? <laughs> I yes. don't know how to love to... him. <laughs> <laughs> I only meant to melt her face a little. <laughs> um, B.A. Robertson here. Um, number one hit was Bang Bang in 1978. I have it on 45. It's a very good record. This, significantly less so. Mm. I like that we get a story, then a number. Story, then a number. That's a good good format. Mm. <laughs> um, also, fun fact about this. While he's looking down, there was a camera pointing directly up at him, and he was told that that was going to be the main camera that they were going to keep cutting back to. Um, and then they just oh, didn't use any of it. So he keeps looking down in this. Wow. I just assumed he didn't know the lyrics. <laughs> no, he's, at the minute he's looking down at a camera that he was told was going to be the main one for filming, and then they just never used any of the footage from it. So he looks like a right Wally. Damn. So he's got like a little, I thought just had a little guy <laughs> with, gonna... just like with the words on. Uh, I was going to say, is it karaoke? Kind of feels like it should be that. <laughs> I could see it. I could see it. <laughs> Next up, don't stop believing. <laughs> next, next well, up, God has... bless the USA. Vincent, oh, this is this is my jam. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's definitely rocking the cool colors between the green, the blue, the the green eyeshadow, the blue clothes, and the purple lips. Hmm. I think he needs to go for some warmer tones to really pull out the good stuff. It is. I mean, for a vampire, I mean, considering Vincent looks positively tanned. Um, you know, he, he probably needs to get a meal or something. It would probably be good. For all these anthology films, I was because they, they're always telling the story to someone, aren't they? Or another character. Mm. What if the other character just mm-hmm. like sometimes happens in real life, just turns around and says, You know what? I'm just I'm 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 not really I'm not really interested. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I mean, you, what, you're probably making this up. I mean, what melty? A man with a melty face? What fuck are you on about? I'm I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just not getting into this story. There's a couple on that table over there talking about pigeons. That's just completely blindsided. Anything you have to say? I'm sorry. I'm got to go now. <laughs> it's like I'm just not. In, I've got better things to be doing. It's Friday night. You for fuck's sake. I mean, <laughs> I've got better things to be doing than watching Bauhaus. <laughs> He finishes his first story and he's just like, well, I'll see you in a bit. And then the other guy goes, the second story. He goes, no, mate, I'm done. No, I'm out. we're done. <laughs> Roll the credits. <laughs> Did they only have this guy for like an hour? Why is it just one shot? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, he saw this as his big break. This was going to be the film that was going to be like launching the career of B.A. Robertson. And instead he had two songs that got into the top ten and then he faded into obscurity. I don't think he even has a Wikipedia page, so... Wow. Mm. Damn, I'm pretty sure I even have a Wikipedia page, so what does that say? Wow. Hey, Dan, do you have a Wikipedia page? Sadly not. Not after the incident. <laughs> Hey, I talk about pigeon fucking, so if I can get a Wikipedia page, so can you. <laughs> Those fancy lights are gonna are gonna melt off his pretty makeup. Mm. Yeah. Oh, was that the camera you were referring oh. to, Dan? That you just did the mm. face in. Yes, that was the one <laughs> shot that got used. Nice. Oh, we're spooky. It's a spooky yes. show. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the guy from Cabaret. <laughs> This is actually my cameo in this film, and I was paid very handsomely, although Vincent Price was a total dick to me, so... Oh, I'm sure. I was gonna say, you clean up nice. You look good in a bow tie. Thank you very much. You know, you, you put on your best face, you put mouthwash in for once, nobody sees the real you. Yeah, I get that. I mean, you're even wearing the proper pants, like, it's not like you skipped on the pants. Well, I mean, as I say, me and Ben record these commentaries completely naked. So, you know, the the opportunity to put clothes oh, on I do too. is quite frankly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always good to have a nice breeze around the knees. Oh, agreed, agreed. And under the boobs. So what's happening now, a game show? Um, no, so he's our special guest for the evening at the Monster Club. Because on top of B.A. Robinson, UB40 and John Williams style rock, um, they also have um, educational people who turn up randomly to stop club antics to talk about history. What a good club that is. Let the party yeah. begin. So is he kind of <laughs> is he kinda like the narrator from uh, Rocky Horror? Yeah. <laughs> he's going to jump into time warp here in just a little bit? <laughs> See, that, that, that fit in with the horror vibe if they all did time warp. A mashup of that and Monster it Mash, would. and you get yourself all dolled skeletons. up to go to the Golden Anus for a night, and you're jamming out to Fat Man Scoop or whatever it is the hip young kids <laughs> listen to these days, and then suddenly fucking Roger Corman comes out and has a twenty minute lecture on Reptilicus. He's trying to be. I got a, I, were you looking for Rod Serling there in terms of the names, or? Um, I just pulled a name out of my arse, Ben. But if you want that, Rod that, Sterling, you can have it. Well, that's the vibe I'm getting from, you know, suited man doing a... Consider the story of a young man blah, 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 who thought he had it all. And then... Uh, and by the way, smoke these cigarettes, <laughs> you pricks. <laughs> oh! That's my Rod Serling impression. <laughs> Imagine a world. A I was going to say, he reminds Vincent me Price. of the guy talking about Hollow Earth from uh, from uh, the mole people. Yeah, because it's like, <laughs> if you watch those old Twilight Zones, he's always, he always does his really cool monologues at the end. But then, right at the end, it's always like, oh, yeah. and before you go, don't forget to pick up these beautiful, you know, larmies. Ooh, that's good shit. Oh, fuck. That's good. <laughs> I think that was the actual dialogue. I could be mistaken, but I'm 95% sure I'm right. I, I've seen, I've caught some of those early episodes, and yeah, I think you're pretty much right on that, so. <laughs> mm. Okay, this is giving serious um, Damien vibes, and I have no idea why. I was going to say, staple of British schools. He's wearing his dad's uniform from when he was 26 years old. <laughs> well, consistency is important. There's some smudgy, smudgy, smudgy going on in that shot, isn't there? Mmm. Sticky time fun? <laughs> that effect. Yeah, smudgy, smudgy, sticky time fun it is. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that on a t-shirt. <laughs> It's a Nostrafatu shadow. I like to think the director thought that this would be the thing they'd remember him for. <laughs> well, it'll be definitely the thing I remember until we get to the next shot. <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, this is a long shot. How can I ever forget this? That was the it's best. It's so interesting. I mean. That was the best thing that happened in this shot. <laughs> Can't oh, look what happens next. What the door. shot are we talking about? Oh, look, he walked through a door. <laughs> Buzzing. I mean that bow tie. Why is everybody here dressed like Bella Lugosi circa Edward 1997? Uh because it was the 80s and that's how everybody dressed. Were you not there? I mean, I was a kid and I dressed like that. You know they often say if you don't remember the 80s, you were there. <laughs> 
So if I remember them, does that mean I wasn't there? Um, it means that you were either hyper-conscious or you weren't there? I don't know. We're going to have to probe this deeper. Ben, get the mind probe. Is that Creepy Man from the first story? <laughs> is that another actor? I think it's another actor. It's Nicholas Lindhurst in an early role. <laughs> they, they, were looking, they were looking for a specific type when they made this movie. <laughs> Creepy, uh, very, very pale, and uh, sonic whistle, surprisingly. You, you just described being English there, Triv. I, that's not... That We need more information. <laughs> you guys all have a sonic whistle? Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it comes to comes standard. Dell, does this bloke here with a moustache mm. want to tell me a story about a werewolf? <laughs> I told him where to go, didn't I? Because I had things to do that day. <laughs> So you told him to go to the Yorkshire uh, Moors so he could be uh, get caught or get turned into a werewolf um, and then raid London and like take out an entire porn theater? Very much so. In fact, the porn theater thing is the critical part of that. I was going to say, that seems like it's a pretty important piece. Well, this is it. We had one who tried to take mm. out a delicatessen and we had to sadly kill him. Um, you know, oh, you can do fair. what you want to our sleaze, but you touch our cold cuts and we're coming at you. <laughs> Is he doing? Is he doing like a horror movie voice? Thou beware of the dark woods ahead, young child. It's my horror yes, movie he voice. Is. No, you really don't want to hear. You don't want to hear his horror movie voice because uh, <laughs> it, it'll make you shit your pants. Just you know, with one syllable. All right, Governor. How you? How you doing, apples and pear? Oh, blimey! Hello, this is my horror <laughs> voice right here. I am terrifying, and I will cause you to lose your sanity hey. and your trousers. Thank you. Great. I lost both. Thanks. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> I wasn't even wearing trousers and now I've lost them twice. <laughs> How will I face my family and it, friends? It just means you're owed one, so the next time you put trousers on, they'll just fly off and out the window and go and start a new life with <sighs> a pair of pagonias somewhere. <laughs> Genuinely just did a little jig then to that music. I don't have a spare pair to spare. I'm sorry then, you're just going to... Anyway. <laughs> you're, you're just going to have to be lower half naked for the rest of your life. God, going spare. Oh, fuck. What did I say? <laughs> Apples and pears. Oh, hello, my darlings. Uh. <laughs> the Ryan in Spain stays mainly in the pain. Oh. <laughs> well, that just ruffles my shirt. I'm so angry, I'm going to write to the junior minister of the Conservative Party. I'm sorry, I don't want to be mean to children, but his ears are massive. They are. Yes. They're just enormous. He actually starred in the 1986 film The Ear. No wonder they're about to push him <laughs> in that pool. Like the little squirt ears. It was a creature feature about a small schoolboy who accidentally gets made radioactive and turns into a giant ear that attacks Scarborough. <laughs> was it better or worse than The Crawling Eye? Um. Well, you didn't see the sequel, The Ear Meets the Crawling Eye. Together they formed oh, shit. Together they formed the trilogy film The Face. <laughs> oh, what a dick. Yes. He so just ben, made a right. So is that what they do for fun in English schools? I have to ask. It's, because what, like, it's what we do is for fun as English adults. Yeah, we do that now. Ah. <laughs> um, so preschool games, when we were kids at school, I mean, it was largely sort of, you know, trading cards, jumping over puddles, fighting... Um, Making fun of others for their giant ears. Yeah. Um, mm. If you were lucky, you'd get a football, which you could throw at other kids to make them sort of bleed uncontrollably. That was fun. Belittling the weakest. Nice. Did you have a vicar, like, did you have a vicar staring at you the whole time? Oh, yes. Pedophiles were rife in the 1980s and 90s in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. To, I'm glad that it's that this is true to life then. Highly accurate. Frighteningly so. Was that Donald Pleasant nonce, nonce? It was Donald Pleasant yes. Ah, oh, I love Donald Pleasant. He's my favourite. <laughs> Snoopy rules. He does. <laughs> yes, he I'm does. I'm a big Flash. I'm a big Flash Beagle fan. So you know, I won't hear a bad word said about that Beagle. <laughs> oh, good. Didn't we just leave this shot? Yes, but we the uh, director thought that we needed more of it, much, much more from many angles. Uh, Roger Moore. Yes, I was going to say. <laughs> oh, he fell over. I mean, the, the grass looks nice. <laughs> ha ha! <laughs> I can fly... I'm going to send you all to the cornfield! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fly away with my gigantic ears. 
Come, it is time to keep your appointment with the Wicker Man. <laughs> <laughs> Summer is oh, no. coming in. Cool, blimey. Dan, this is like... Oh, no. It's like a documentary of your troubled, horrible childhood, Dan. <laughs> ben, I told you not to bring up my troubled, <laughs> terrible childhood where I got <laughs> by Donald Pleasance in public again. Ready to trap the unwary, the show off, the fool. And this is the place you'd expect to find me. The child who watched the Monster Club. <laughs> He'll be back, back, back. So were there a lot of fences involved in your public uh, uh, the abuse and whatnot? Well, I mean, I uh, tried to keep it low key. <laughs> ah, okay. You know. I was, too, I was too sexy to be bullied at school. I was just... <laughs> I got off easy. <laughs> Sorry, can we can we get that on a t-shirt, Ben? I was too sexy to be. <laughs> no, too sexy to be bullied. That's why I was. <laughs> oh, oh my that god, was that's my joke. problem. <laughs> I was too sexy to be. So I just got bullied. They were like, "Damn you, being so Where cute." They... <laughs> Weirdly, those were the original lyrics for uh, "Right Said Fred" and "I'm Too Sexy." <laughs> Okay, so we have a vicar and we have a van showing up that's probably offering free candy. Candy? What the hell? I thought they were vicars then for a minute. Like it was like some sort of secret army of vicars. He's too cute. I mean, they could. We can't put our fingers in his hole. They're, <laughs> they're vicars, but they're uh, disguised as uh, chartered accountants. <laughs> they're vicars, but they're disguised as pedophiles. <laughs> Oh, the shit. perfect disguise. <laughs> well, we are truly fucked. <laughs> See, we toler we can tolerate diddlers, oh. but uh, chartered accountants, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not our, that's not our game. They sicken me. Yes, I'm sure so. What are those weird implements he's using? The modern age, I do not understand what those I are. I believe they're called fingers. Ah. Maybe he's using a butter knife to carve the words in. <laughs> <laughs> the emphasis on fresh fruit on this shot tells you quite a lot about this part of the movie. I mean... It was paid for by the uh, Fruit Coalition <laughs> Mafia So Ben, people. at this point in the film, what does the banana represent? <laughs> I filled that question to my uh, emotionally abused uh, partner, Dan. And he was Phallic abused. symbol. Mm. Hor horribly. Are you also part pigeon? <laughs> yes, for a brief time I did play a pigeon on Broadway. Okay, we've, that is we've some, moved past this. <laughs> that is some good lurking he's doing. That is some excellent lurking acting. Am I looking right, boss? Oh, hey. You're looking great, son. <laughs> oh, and he's lurking from the favourite cafe. You're looking fantastic. <laughs> oh, I love that. That British shop. Oh, hey, shop. look, they have tea there. That British shop just advertising tea and Pepsi. That's... <laughs> England in 1981 in a nutshell. Can I? Can what? What if I want coke? No. <laughs> you will be sacrificed to the elder gods. <laughs> Bring in the pipe. What if you want Mountain Dew? Or uh, what if you want uh, Dr Pepper? Um, then you will be cast out <laughs> to the four you will corners. Live in exile at Wookie <laughs> Hole Cave. <laughs> oh no. Mm. He's just drawing penises at this point. He is. It was the British way. So this yes. is a prequel to Superbad. It's the American way, too. <laughs> I don't know if they had this in American textbooks at school, but in English schools, one of the common things with textbooks was you'd have, like, an 100-page book, and you would say, you'd write on page 2, turn to page 96, and you'd turn to page 96, and you'd say, turn to page 22, and you'd turn to page 22, and you'd say, turn to page 97, and you'd turn to page 97, and it would say, you smell. And that was that was our entertainment back in, in school, back in the wow. day. You'd spend... We didn't. We were never that interested. Oh yeah, you'd, you'd spend ages going. Oh, I wonder what it's going to be. It's wonder what it's going to be. Oh, it's a cock and bollocks. Brilliant. I don't. I don't, I don't remember it being like a fight in fantasy, <laughs> choose your own adventure type. <laughs> to go to the mm. dragon's cave, turn to page twenty-five. <laughs> to, to lurk <laughs> with Donald Pleasance. Close the book immediately. Lurking, <laughs> lurking with Donald Pleasance was my favourite nineteen eighties daytime documentary <laughs> series. <laughs> I was on the one of three channels that there actually were back in that time. Yeah. I've, I think something sinister is about to happen. <laughs> Today, Donald mm, will be lurking at the seaside. Something untoward. Uh-oh. Mm. Does does it involve his giant ears? Are his ears getting bigger in every shot? 
I think so. <laughs> when do we get to the uh, have you been served level of um, Jug? What was it? I can't think of his name. Jughead? Um, <laughs> he was the, the manager for the floor. Oh, John Inman. Uh, Mr. Humphreys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a. Uh, ah, it doesn't matter. Sorry. There's one guy that had j- enormous ears and they made fun of him constantly for it. Oh. Ben you Stiller. Know what? It rings a bell. It rings a bell. We'll, we'll say Jerry Seinfeld and leave it at that. <gasps> I think that works. I like I'll that. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. Where is he? Where, is he? Where are the drugs? <laughs> Where is the boy? We will play <laughs> the violin bombs? music until you tell us. <laughs> Here are the bombs. Yes. Well, actually, <laughs> actually, they're carrying around their penises in their violin cases. <laughs> Because they, they they're detachable. <laughs> one of them one of them just has like an outlet that'll allow them to sort of start a car. The other one, you know, just has like it's just strings, so he can play beautiful harp music. Oh, I like hmm. it. It was the British way. Yeah. British way sounds pretty solid to mm-hmm. me. You could start your car and play some lovely music whilst beating someone with your yes. now detached dick. So that's you know. <laughs> Well, it's practical. You know, Britain in the 80s seems like it was incredibly practical. You know, you didn't just have one use for one thing. Oh, yeah. We, it was... You can use your detachable penis for beating someone over the head like a billy club, and you can use it for doing other a things. A willy club. That's what they called it. <laughs> the amount of people who ended up in A&E with third degree burns for trying to stir their tea that week was just, you know... <laughs> Now the question is: Were the uh, strings in the violin cases were those also used for the music for this? Oh shot? yeah, all, all the music's very diegetic in this film. It's all being played yes. live. Ah, good to know. You're actually hearing what they're hearing. Oh, someone. Well, there you go. That's important. All right, who opened their present early? <laughs> so, oh, great! A dead person. Just what I always wanted. So is he? So is he a vampire? Or I guess this film makes up its own creatures. So he's a he's a vampu. Or whatever, <laughs> and the the, bowl, the bowler-hatted men have come to eradicate him. That's horrifically racist mm-hmm. to the vampire species. Everybody knows that he's a shanty. <laughs> you know what? This is like beat for beat my tenth birthday. <laughs> were you the man? Were you the man in the bowler hat or the the pale man in the coffin? I was the pale man in the coffin. <laughs> So that's why I'm still around is because they didn't finish off the I, birthday I've party. literally just realised that's Bray Eklund. And I, I can't yes. believe I did. I, I okay. literally didn't twig before. I was too busy talking about it... Willie's on Dr Pepper or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got a new tagline for this episode. Willie's and Dr Pepper it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, liked, I, I, like his, I love Donald Pleasance's little face when he dies. Like, oh, I just killed him, me. Look at that. I d- I did that really, really well. <laughs> you know, I don't know that I believe he actually bit him. I think it was a theatrical effect. <laughs> I refuse to believe that. Gave him a big old smooch on the neck. <laughs> yes, he did. Oh no, it's worse than being turned into a vampire. He gave me a hickey. Yes. What will 80s British people, 80s British people say? Over here, it would be, oh no, he's giving me a love bite. <laughs> Drat. So is this when... Gasp. Is this that, is this a, is this that phase in Britt Eklund's career when she was appearing in any old shite for money, or was, was that sort of before that point? I mean, you know, after The Wicker Man, was there ever really a point where she was in anything as high class or high art, let's be honest? <laughs> <laughs> Not until 2006's Wicker Man. Now that that was the return. That was the uh, that was the uh, the high watermark reset. Oh no! Oh yes, he's been, definitely. He's so. been turned into a vampire. There's, a, the, <laughs> there's only one cure. We're going to have to bugger him. <laughs> yes, giant hammer to face. <laughs> you know. I, they need to get a bigger hammer. I just I'm not buying the effect of the ham or of the of that whole it, thing. It needs to be comically sized to be effective. I want like a sledgehammer, maybe. Um, I think so. Something that should be hold like all three of them in a goodies Monty Python style sort of you know. Oh yeah, 
The one thing that that does raise issues with is, you know, it's not going to fit in a violin case. You're going to have to go like a cello or something. <laughs> there's, there's just a pause where it's like, oh, no, Gov, we're going to have to stake you. But the hammer is currently on delivery <laughs> on the back of a flatbed truck stuck on the M6. <laughs> it should be here in three hours. You've just got to basically hang around. That was such a girly yes. little tap he just did. That wouldn't kill him. Thrust deep, man. Thrust deep. <laughs> It's like Rocky Horror, they're shouting instructions. <laughs> yes. That's even personalized there on the side of the hammer. Mm. Oh no, they just killed their um, boss? Father? Mate? You know, there's there's yeah. no sadder sight than having to watch the man who killed my father be killed and slowly carried out the front gate. <laughs> yes. See, but now they're going to pull them. What a funny old day. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Cora, I guess I'm the new vampire hunter around here, ain't I? <laughs> exactly. So now they're going to have to stop and pull the Monty Python thing where, like, they stop, put it down, the next guy gets into the coffin, and there's one guy left to carry everybody. <laughs> so all, all the anthology films have, like, a funny one. So is this the funny one, I'm guessing? Um, yes. yeah. How did that one tap send it through the entire thing? I don't. I don't believe that that they're not buying me or they're not selling me on the realism. It turns out that Donald Pleasance's skin is actually made of a very thin polymer that could actually be punctuated by something even as brief as a gentle breeze. Ah, good to mm. know. How did he survive, uh, Michael Meyer? Then uh, he didn't, unfortunately. Um, hmm. It was all stuntmen. If you look really closely, you'll see that Donald Pleasance gets swapped out at the last minute for Tor Johnson. Ah, oh, there you go. There you go. Well, Mike Myers doesn't look like Mike Myers on film. You gotta glue a couple of cats together. <laughs> what do you use if you need a couple of cats glued together? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, your ears will never get smaller, but at least you'll never turn into a vampire. <laughs> so everything's all right now. In fa oh, twist! <laughs> I forgot. I was immune to wow. stakes. Vampires have far too much weaknesses, can't they? You can kill any, kill anything. Yeah. Garlic, steaks, running water, look at them funny, call them, call them a name, <laughs> insult them. Sunlight, dark moonlight, Sunlight, spikes. moonlight, light, yes. movement. Good night. The Sparkly boogie. skin. Good times. Grims. <laughs> Too much salt, too much... Oh, wait, that's normal human. Not the enough salt. dance. <laughs> Lightning strikes. Mild rain. Mining... Yes. Mining strikes. Haze. <laughs> See, even he's like, look, can, can I just go now? You've told me two very far-fetched, very unrealistic stories that probably didn't happen, did they? Come on, Vincent. You're just making <laughs> exactly. those up, you're drunk. Oh, yes, yes our number. You know what? And I don't believe that these people are actually monsters. I think they're just people in Halloween masks. <laughs> I think these people are pop stars. Ah, pop stars. Oh my god. The greatest <laughs> monsters of them all. I was going to say, they suck as much as vampires. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Free bird. I keep expecting um, Bruno, Bruno Brooks or Gary Davis to turn up in the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> that was Tapao with uh... cool blimey look at that oh my god she's showing uh, she's almost showing her belly button that's a scary thing that would have got you put in the video nasties list in the 80s no what a harlot uh, no doubt what a yes. next her ankles <laughs> she better not <laughs> otherwise I'm stopping this commentary and we shall refer to our history books and media for the future <laughs> So we're going to go back to pigeon fucking again? Yes, that's much more sensible. <laughs> okay, good, good. I just wanted to double A check. belly button on screen of all things. <laughs> Straight in at number two. There was a time. The new hit from Kate Bush. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see the uh, the other half of Eurythmics in this. <laughs> Annie, 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 which, which half? Annie Lennox or Dave Stewart? That would be uh, Dave. I was going to say the upper. Oh, that's Dave... That's not Dave Stewart. That's Pete Townsend. No, it's not. <laughs> That's Eric Clapton. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Whoever it is, he's handling his instrument very, very well. Mm. <laughs> Don't we Brian all? Brian Wilson on bass guitar. <laughs> <laughs> this was when Brian Wilson was in his druggy cheeseburger phase. <laughs> is that the official name for it? <laughs> well, my psychiatrist just told me to turn up for this monster movie. I said, sure, why not? <laughs> Now listen, guys, I don't like monster movies. The guys come out, they get your hair wet. Come on, Brian. (laughs) (laughs) Just hard cuts to a surfing montage. (laughs) You know, I think Dragon Sound did it better. (laughs) I'd agree. You better talk over this more, Dan, or it's going to get copyright striked for the music. Oh, no. Oh shit! <laughs> Everyone goes silent for the stripper scene. Uh oh, I, I kind I kind of burlesque dancer, but not really. Well, she's dan- doing something with a boa. <laughs> I'm not sure. I believe she's just a basic dancer. There's there's something else to her, isn't yes, there? Yes, she's a private dancer. She dances for money. <laughs> ah, that's a thing. Wow. I know. I make fifty dollars a night. It's amazing. Wow. Which is especially weird because I live she's in England. Is going to get down to it, though? <laughs> oh, there you go. I didn't need a cutaway. So she's to... going to run into issues because she can't take... Oh, God, sorry. No, I was just going to say I didn't need the cutaway to two old men enjoying this rather erotic <laughs> dance. Oh, I say. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of a story. <laughs> Oh my god, she's stripping all the way down. Uh oh. <laughs> this is getting a bit nightmare of before Christmassy. <laughs> this is actually still better animation than Cool World. Now I need an adult. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is at least better than Cool World. It has that distinction. <laughs> you know, Vincent Price was taking that whole like someone stripping down to a skeleton thing very well. I probably would have been freaking out a bit in the audience. If anything, I'd have been more aroused. <laughs> it's just a good thing she didn't do it in the <laughs> middle of one of his stories. Can you imagine that? He suddenly hard cuts from the story to, wait, wait, one minute, let me just adjust myself. Oh, yes. Wow, look at that. Tremendous. (laughs) Now I'm just imagining Vincent getting really upset that the stripper's, like, interrupting his story, so he storms the stage. (laughs) Get off, get off, this is my time. (laughs) Well, in the background, poor uh, John Carradine is just, like, going through auto-asphyxiation the way David did. (laughs) I would say John Carradine didn't get paid enough to be in this movie, but I've seen some of the shit that John Carradine has been in, so fair play oh. to him. This is actually considered high art for him. Straight in at yeah. number six. Well, he was in Coleman Francis movies, God help mm. us. <laughs> now, back to the film. Okay, now you're just making shit up. <laughs> He's like the version of those drunks you get in pubs who talk about their war stories. <laughs> When I, when I, I, fought in, I fought in Vietnam with Elvis. Oh, man. Should have been there. Napalm took my sister. Are we sure that John Carradine isn't a, isn't a uh, zombie already? Because he looks pretty dead. Well, he's who do you think did the striptease? <laughs> oh, That's God, true. a John Carradine striptease just replaced the whale in my nightmares. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> okay, how do we go from um, you know, I'm, stripper I'm, skeleton thing to I'm, this? I'm, I'm going to go to the bar, Vincent. Why don't you tell the story to yourself, and I'll just get the drinks in. Yeah, yeah. number one, <laughs> uh, what, yes. half, half before we go. <laughs> he goes to the bar and he turns back, and Vincent's just talking to air. <laughs> v- Vincent, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just going for a piss, Vincent. I'm just going to the toilet. That reminds me of when I once went for a piss and. <laughs> There was a werewolf who came down from the sky. Oh, whatever. It's like Jesus. Everything has to be a fucking parable. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. Yes. Did you just invent the, my new favourite um, section of this film, the werewolf who took a piss? <laughs> <laughs> it would certainly be more interesting than whatever we're watching. Apparently uh, a Hammer Horror film now, by the looks of it. Big boobied lady, check. Candle, check. Smoke, check. <laughs> You know, this scene reminds me of a scene I saw a few minutes ago where a small boy had a vampire for a father. <laughs> and it kind of crossfades across. Telling stories. Oh, oh, they they, oh, they did a Shyamalan on me. 
<laughs> oh no! Oh, it's all a film. Well, you know how you tell the difference between a hammer, a hammer movie, and a Col- or Corman movie? Color of the uh, candles. You've got you know they they pony up for like the really the really fancy color candles Ooh. in a in a uh, Coleman movie. <laughs> so, you know, just expense is spared. I always know with um, Corman movies, the uh, the big draw is usually the soundtrack and the visuals. As long as you can nail the the, the sound in a good Corman film, it's usually going to be okay. And plus, um, someone usually gets nailed oh, yeah. in a Corman film, so that's the other thing that distincts it from uh, <laughs> very true very <laughs> from other true. ones. When possible, there's at least two. <laughs> if the budget can stretch. Yes, yes. So this, w- so this one is about... Is, can she stretch? <laughs> so this is about a horror film, I'm guessing, that goes disastrously wrong. Oh, no. Uh, s- so, like all the Transformers movies. Ah! <laughs> Baseception. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that car. Mm. It's a penis mobile. I think somebody's compensating. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this, I like the score here. Oh yeah, that'll be just, uh, some of the John Williams magic there. Actually, this was one, done by UB40. Just one chord. That's all you need, really. I mean, there's mm. other chords, but you don't need them. <laughs> We're going to banting. Where are all the banters? Shall we go to banting? <laughs> Oh, cool, blimey, I'm a banter there, mate. <laughs> Practical jokes left, right and centre, let me tell you now. <laughs> it's just full of... And all the guys are either called Gary, ba- Barry or Darren. Yes. Or Gary again. <laughs> the pubs are literally radioactive. You will die if you enter them. And every single female who walks past of any age just gets met with... Cool, cool, eh? Yeah. <laughs> a well, brief I'm glad we're whistle. not there then. <laughs> yes, we're not going anywhere near Banting today. <laughs> or are we? No, we're no, not. No, we're going to oh, no! Louisville. Yay! <laughs> the most made-up British oh, this name. This car is going to be a... <laughs> a hoot and a holler. <laughs> daddy, Daddy, can we go to Luffville? I really want to see the Luffville Pencil Museum. <laughs> no. Just... You're going to Banterville and you will like it. No, but Daddy, <laughs> Bant- <laughs> Banterville has gender stereotypes that I disagree with in this modern climate. Can we not go to Luffville? I really want to see the Progressive Pencil Museum. <laughs> but Daddy, Banterville has been cancelled. Didn't you see on? I saw it on Twitter. <laughs> I like Banterville because it speaks to me on a deep and personal level. <laughs> Hello, I'm Banterville. How do you do? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's become sentient. <laughs> What a stupid joke that was. <laughs> the sentient you know town what? of Banterville. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are much worse jokes that I have heard. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, it looks like he's driven into Lucio Fulci's The Beyond. <laughs> he's he's entered the world of his own creation. I'm guessing is the this is thing. <laughs> the Twilight Zone. <laughs> the screaming starts now. Well, that just cauterized yes. my jacket. <laughs> this isn't a real place. <laughs> oh, bloody hell, I've entered the bloody void, and I? Well, better have a fag and think it through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the shot's going to suddenly turn around and they're going to be on another set because this set is so incredibly shitty. Like, not even the graves look real. It's like uh, Ed Wood level bad. <laughs> what if it just What if it just kept doing that? So every time it cut to, cut, 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 a director, and then just does it again and again and again. It becomes incredibly <laughs> just, meta. You just don't know which, it, what is the film within the film? <laughs> I mean, that that is, that would be the absolute, like, epitome of an anthology film. And then, while we're recording this, it pans over, cut, 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 and there's someone in each of our collective rooms. <laughs> on a on a on a, cam- on a chair and a and a loudspeaker, but it's the same person. <laughs> cut, cut, oh, cut! Shit. That, that was no Dan. That was no good at all. Now get get out of here. Change the lights. <laughs> Fire the actor. <laughs> I'll give you this: the second act was incredibly strong, and you really gave it your all. But that first act on pigeon fucking really needs to be trimmed down. <laughs> oh, the street, the senses will never. That was that was like my only contribution. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Well, I hope they don't come in and judge me too harshly because I am naked as we're doing this. So, <laughs> as as I'm I, as I'm Ben, as I'm we. All right. This commentary is rated X as- for exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it's rated T for titillating. <laughs> <laughs> it's rated A for a vib- adventurous. <laughs> I was gonna say asses, but that works too. <laughs> Double A for two asses. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> wow, that was the out of nowhere. That was a, that was a jumpy scare. Oh god, it's the entire yes. village of Bantville. <laughs> How long have you been here? Oh, past twenty, thirty minutes. <laughs> hey, you guys are all great. Hey, cheerio, chaps! <laughs> cheerio, chaps! I we'll, uh, see you around the old pub. <laughs> John Carpenter later did this as a whole film. He did. This was the, actually the basis for Escape from New York. In the, or was it in, in, in the Mouth of Madness with Sam Neill, which is basically just this? Essentially. I thought that it was uh, Ghosts of Mars with Ice Cube. <laughs> hmm. I was thinking it was a Ken Russell classic. Oh, yeah. Ah, well. yes. Ken, oh, Ken oh. Russell's A Filmmaker in Love, the classic. Mm. <laughs> cool, blimey, we've cut your wires out. Well, you ain't going nowhere, you bloody prick. Are you ready to join the village of the damned? <laughs> <laughs> well, that just blow dries my hair. I was gonna... It's quite good. You get your own robes. <laughs> Why is he the only one that has colour? Like, he's got the yellow hair and he's got the bandana. It's like Wizard of Oz. Um, <laughs> he, he's, he's the Wizard of Peasants. <laughs> the, wizard yeah. of ba- the Wizard of Bants. <laughs> <laughs> We represent the Lollipop Guild. Hello, the uh, Lollipop Guild. I'd like to make a complaint. I checked into the Hotel California two weeks ago, and what you didn't tell me was that it was full of peasants and that the graveyard was made of styrofoam. <laughs> <laughs> but it was such a lovely place. <laughs> oh, yes, the Continental Bed and Breakfast was delightful. Well, sir, it did say you can <laughs> check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Bloody oh, hell, I should go. have read the small print. <laughs> They're all valets. They all want tips from him to take all of his stuff upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> and this is also what you call aggressive customer service. <laughs> I've told you before, no, go away. But you just want to put a Bible in your room. <laughs> <laughs> they brought you up to be yeah, a pagan. <laughs> We're from Gideon. It's Gidea. a sin. It's a sin. God, the set looks even worse from up here. I brought you your gruel. Please, sir, may I have some more? <laughs> <laughs> I brought you your complimentary bowl of gruel. Can't afford gruel, unfortunately, <laughs> so I just pissed in a bowl. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the set painters, they uh, they started like doing brick on the wall, but then they got tired of doing it, and they said, fuck it, and just left little bits here and there. It's the uh, what I like to call the Monet style of set design. Start off quite detailed and then just lose the volition to live. Yeah, pretty much. That sounds about right. Do you reckon the actual audio commentary is as in-depth and expertise and sort of informed and intellectual as this one? Ben, what are you talking about? This is the commentary on the Blu-ray release. We were oh my god! Time. Yes. Pan, pan over the studio. Cut, cut, cut. That's no good at all. <laughs> Simply <laughs> dreadful. Stop it! You You're being win. silly! <laughs> his hair's too long to be a vicar <laughs> yes damn hippie these are the only clothes we're given by the good lord himself it was a choice of this order in the nud but unfortunately the bbfc won't let me be in the nud oh sir i want to be in the nud so badly they let cartoon skeleton lady be in the nud yes <laughs> but not me, poor peasant girl. Not got enough class, you see. Jack, Jack, Jacqueline Skellington. <laughs> BFC oh. won't let me be me, but me, me, me. Oh, <laughs> sorry, but my attempt at Eminem just kind of took a dumb. I apologize. <laughs> it's because I'm picturing. I'm just. Cause I'm picturing that guy doing it. They tried to shut me down on MTV. But it feels so <laughs> empty Thank without you. me. It would feel so dreadfully empty without me. <laughs> I really want to see Eminem do that or someone like do like a British rendition of, of his songs. I think that'd be great. Uh, 
Will Smith don't have to cuss in his raps to sell records? Well, I do. So screw him and bloody hell to you. <laughs> and sod off to you too. So are his eyebrows becoming werewolves? Because I kind of feel like they're becoming werewolves. Triv, you've, you've fallen into our trap. This is actually now a completely different film called Eyebrows. It was the sequel to Ears, um, which in turn was the sequel to The Crawling Shit. Eye and is another part of the face cinematic universe. <laughs> what are you talking about? That is how a gentleman dresses. With his eyebrows? <laughs> Do not go in there, sir. That is where the monster lives. <laughs> God blimey, sir. Now go, you disgust me. Your face is terrible. I just told you like a six out of ten. I just told you not to <laughs> fucking go in there. Now what are you doing, you silly c- <laughs> Oh no. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Damn aggressive zombies. <laughs> this is a precursor to twenty eight days later. John Williams rocking the synth. It's almost like none of them have heard of the NHS. (laughs) Well, she told... We warned you! She said don't go in there. Yes. She just can't obey simple instructions. What an arrogant man. What an upstart. (laughs) How dare he? That's how you know he's not a true Brit. (laughs) True British person, when told not to enter a chapel, would go, right here. And that would be it. That It'd be dumb. The, orig- the original draft of the John Wayne film, True Brit. <laughs> <laughs> but then the, the, stu- the studio wanted some uh, creative changes made to it. You know, instead of being set in a borstal in the 1960s, they wanted it set in the Wild West. <laughs> the script was only oh, the original yeah. script was only six pages long, and was basically five minutes of somebody setting up an exposition, and then John Wayne going, "Oh crikey, that sounds like a terrible business. I'm not getting involved." <laughs> Hmm. I think he's been dead a couple days. <laughs> it's still good. I reckon he'll finish it. Just give him time. Yeah. Any yeah. minute. Any he's just got to clear the dust. <gasps> it's the map to the hidden treasure of... That's quite the boner he has. <laughs> Hang on a minute. This skeleton's writing in French. <laughs> no! This is written in some weird made-up language. No, that's German. Oh. <laughs> Hang on, this village is German. I am out of here. Enjoy your death trap, ladies. And they ran out of budget at this point, so they just used concept art. Oh, yeah. bloody hell. Why have they caught my bad side? <laughs> I mean, I've seen worse. I mean, even the even the zombies in this are a respectable 6 out of 10. Oh, great. This yes. is the graphic novel version. I was going to say, it's like a magic eye. (laughs) Ah, the good old days of giving old people a sponge bath. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, I don't want to go to bed. He looks so adorable. He does. I just want to... He's just sulking. He's like, hmm. Give him a little hat. Feed him some sugar cubes. You have to go out and conquer the world now. No, don't want to. Damien, what have I told you? There'll be no supper yep. if you don't conquer the world. I want supper. <laughs> I want toast. You can have toast when you conquer the world. White bread. No, brown bread. White bread's not good for you. I want white bread. Okay, you can have white bread. You want Nutella. Can't have Nutella. It doesn't exist yet in this country. I want Nutella. <laughs> it's off. Wow, look at the... Hey, it's my family reunion. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, the, some fantastically drawn breasts on these zombies. Really quite something. <laughs> I saw his weenus. And that's what we're known for. <laughs> Please do not pay attention to zombie penis. Yeah, but zombie ass is pretty hot, oh, though. Oh, yeah, they all thick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn saying thick. <laughs> this is the next, uh, the next version of America's Next Top Model. <laughs> Pre or post makeup? Mm. That's the bigger question. Uh, it depends on which one you're talking about. The first two pre... The third, the next three are post. Fair dues, fair dues. Yeah. Oh, Get no. away from here, child! That girl that I met two seconds ago got grabbed by a bunch of people. Elizabeth Batherly called, she wants this chick. <laughs> I just read the graphic novel, I know all the backstory. Hey, I could make a really good movie out of this. 
Yes. <gasps> no, not a prop cross. No, no. It's so hideous. We can't look at Why it. Why do they have it in their village? I was just about to say, it's that thing we've been living near all our lives. We've just realized we hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We hate it. Make it go away. Where is our precious? There's a couple of perverts who just sit outside the church all day just going, oh, yeah. Oh, this is so bad. <laughs> oh, stick that nail. Are you saying they like to... <laughs> stick, oh, stick martyr are you, are all the way. they enjoy... Uh... More like <laughs> stick they, martyr. Do they enjoy stroking the cross? <laughs> <laughs> Show us the pointy hat. Show us the pointy hat. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. That, that's not where it goes. Oh, that incense. <laughs> <laughs> that scene in The Exorcist is not a guide. <laughs> Take me to the outside world. To Banterville. We will. And then we'll shoot you. Or leave you in <laughs> Bantville. <laughs> They'll love you in Bantville. <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> and on second oh, thoughts get... I'll stay in the creepy plague village thank you very much yes god what a bunch of stoners hey ho but their aim is incredibly good for being essentially zombies <laughs> I'm picturing the, the character in the film making that same joke what a bunch of stoners <laughs> quite good wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> ha 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 <laughs> she, she's looking at him like yes <laughs> <laughs> Watch it be like a tiny little building or like a massive building and that's like a tiny window. <laughs> but they just focus on that one thing. Like, it turns ah! out it's all just the incredible shrinking man and they've all actually shrunk down to like an inch. Literally the most easiest dispatched, wimpiest villains in the entire of cinema history. <laughs> yeah, They're much. even worse than the vampires. They're scared of daylight, nightlight, <laughs> crosses, rain, sun, fog, <laughs> air. <laughs> Well, see, what, see what he's done is the trick is he's taken the cross out of the window, and now he should have kept the cross in the window because now they're going to go look. He's taken the thing out the window. We can be creepy again and and lurk <laughs> and advance. <laughs> but all they can do lurking going so, on. So in this here's film. a question: how, how do the graves? How do the gravestones that are crosses not put them off, but the regular <laughs> cross does? <laughs> That's a good uh. point. <laughs> Trip, he just broke the movie. Like, look, I think I did, but I, I don't think that it's an unfair question to ask. No, I think it's a very valid and fair criticism. And even though the film is now utterly in disrepair, um, I think it deserves it. I think it deserves to be in that state yes. of disrepair. I'm just, I just love the idea of these people who've lived in this creepy village all their lives and not realised that <laughs> their one weakness is everywhere. Like a vampire working in an Italian restaurant. <laughs> I've just had a new subscriber to my YouTube channel called Turtle Man the Hero. Nice. <laughs> I just take three random words and put it together and that's most YouTube subscribers. <laughs> Billy the Giant Horse. Perfect. So uh, what, what, what was that What was that YouTube? What was that guy called then? Turtle... Hang on. Hang on. It? hang on. It was Turtle Man the Hero. Right. Turtle Man the Hero. Unless you're some <laughs> far right weirdo, then this video is dedicated to you. <laughs> yes. And if you are a far right weirdo, please provide evidence. <laughs> <laughs> Leave your subscription, but never comment. <laughs> do literally do not talk to us ever. <laughs> not joking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've done everything we can to capture them. We threw rocks at them. We stared at them a bit, and we sort of waved our arms, sort of vaguely near them, in an attempt to grab them. We've done everything we can. Yes. We've got to let them go. Oh yeah! Oh no! Fog. My one so weakness. So they're scared of. We've tried. <laughs> fog. Our seventh weakness. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out she was dead the whole time. It turns out she was him the whole time. <gasps> Gasp! Well, she looks good as a chick. Turns out she was a sled. Or he looks good as a chick. No. <laughs> This is what happens when you're hit mildly hard in the back with a rock. <laughs> it automatically disables you. It just cuts to Vincent Price's lips. He goes, Rosebud. And then it ends. Ha 
Where are the pretty clothes? In Banterville. <laughs> so you think about Vincent Price telling this story, and it's told from his perspective. <laughs> He's just like, and that's when he had a raging boner and realized he would never find true love again. <laughs> and one single tear rolls down his face. <laughs> and he realized after holding up the cross for the ninth time that cross bad. <laughs> <laughs> Cross bad? Yes, cross bad. Cross very bad. Cross not good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just cuts back to them. Oh, right. Carry on. Luckily, his mind t- <laughs> Luckily, his mind turned to more fun things as he frolicked through the field. <laughs> I love the uh, the adolescent wants of the 1980s. All she really wanted was sunlight and some nice clothes. Modern teenagers today would be like, I'm not leaving the village for anything less than an Xbox One. And he celebrated <laughs> by throwing himself into traffic in an oncoming police car. <laughs> Yes. It's the British way. <laughs> <laughs> the British way. Everybody knows when you hit 30. It's just the way it works. Wow. I mean, consistency is important. If that's part of the culture, then that's part of the culture. You know, you can't... Re- I mean, if you were to tell us to stop, that's that's um, that's against our culture and we would be very offended quite frankly i wouldn't want so, to do that i try not to no. on, impede on other people's uh, beliefs it's it's just something we've grown up with since the thatcher era you know we we've gone yeah. through a lot and you got to try once after that it's fine you either grow up an eccentric weirdo yeah. or whatever but oh no the police are taking him back to luffville when they should have taken him to bantville no. so these aren't the banter oh, no. police Stop! Fiends! Roads where we're going, we don't need roads. Roads where we're going, we don't need Gasp! Ends with a car crashing. Turns out we did need roads. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we cannot let this be the end. <laughs> Yes. You left your car here, so thus you must stay where your car died. You have 15 minutes to move your haunted village. You have 10 minutes to move your haunted village. You have 5 minutes to move your haunted village. Your haunted village has been crushed into a cube. You have 15 minutes to move your cube. It's the spooky police. (laughs) Yes. Well, surely if he just does like... If he just gets his hand in his other hand and makes a little cross sign of his fingers, just they'll just go away again. So what's the, what's the point? Yeah. Oh, they've all got spiky teeth. Uh, no, I've been had. Ooh. What a twist. <laughs> what? God. You're talking absolute John shit. John Cardine's head looks like it's going to explode. <laughs> you have had... Vince, you've had one too many gin and tonics. Sit the fuck down. No, I've got one more. One more. <laughs> Let me tell you one more. No. <laughs> it's about it's about a man who turns into cheese. It's very good. <laughs> <laughs> So the man has cheese is very good or the tail is very good because you bring cheese into this and we're going to have issues. Yes. <laughs> That's all you get out of it. I'm trying to think of a typical sort of plot from these films. It's I've got one more. It's really good. It's about a man on a boat, but everyone on the boat is um uh, uh, dead. It's, <laughs> it's a man it's about a man with nine fingers. Nine fingers. Well, okay, Just... 10, but he thinks he has nine. <laughs> well, actually, this one time he looked at his hands really quickly and he thought he had nine fingers, but then he put his th- other thumb up and he found out he had ten. <laughs> oh, I th- he looked at his hand really quickly. <laughs> so Vincent sort of is talking to John Carradine and says, these tales are true, these monsters are real, and then it hard cuts and they're in, like, a therapy room and all of these people are criminals who are currently in um, rejuvenative therapy to get back into society. And the Monster Club is actually a club full of criminals who are trying to get back on the straight and narrow. And Vincent's stories are the only way that they keep entertained. Ooh. Ah, interesting. You you like endings like that. That's kind of like when you pitch me your idea for how to end Doctor Who. I seem to remember it was extremely similar to that. (laughs) Very much so. Your 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 idea was literally just he wakes up one day in a nursing home and he's pissed himself or something. Like that. <laughs> Not a million That's what John miles John Carradine off. just did. <laughs> <laughs> 
So the so the dude with the uh, with the bulging eyes, you can tell that that guy right there has seen some shit. Yes, that's really that's me again in a very polite cameo. Um, I was paid very oh, handsomely nice. for the day. Uh, ben there is in the foreground yes, with were. the lovely long hair and beard. Um, oh yeah. yeah, together we <laughs> these, we do all right. These stories are the copyright of me alone. Do not nick them. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm not sure anybody would want to nick them. <laughs> <laughs> These stories are mine. You hear me, mine. Do not nick. <laughs> <laughs> Copy, copyright Vincent in 1981. Yes. <laughs> I will break your legs. Yes. If I was John Carradine, I just really want to get home now. Or maybe just go I'm to seeing, a different pub. Yes. I'm seeing double here. Four John Carradines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of us. Do you feel like they just went to a thrift shop, picked up every single piece of clothes, threw it down in the middle of the thing, and just said, okay, pick your outfit, pick your mask, whatever, however things end up, that's the outfit you wear for this entire movie. Yes. Yes. <laughs> in stereo. That's a sense I get with this. Yes. <laughs> Very much so. All, 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 all the budget was spent on the um, fading 80s one-hit wonders who provided the score. <laughs> Okay, so. chaps, also, bit of Vincent bad news. Pri- We've... <laughs> we had a £100,000 budget, and uh, unfortunately £98,000 of that has gone to B.A. Robertson. Um, but that's okay. Oh, wow. That's okay. We can make it work. <laughs> <laughs> Did any of it go to teach Vincent Price how to dance? <laughs> I was just about to say I like him doing a little buggy there to the pretty things. It's like a... <laughs> if... See, Danny, if, if that should have been a more Top of the Pops, just the sight of Vincent boogieing away. You've got, like, you know, Frankie goes to Hollywood and then just him in the back, in the foreground. Oh, that's true. And <laughs> when two tribes go to war. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to have seen him host some Top of the Pops mm-hmm. in the 70s and 80s. I think he would have been ace. <laughs> Tonight we've got Kate Bush and the Eurythmics. <laughs> <laughs> but first, here's a new one from New Edition. It's called Candy Girl. Take it away, boys. <laughs> Oh, here's one from NWO. Fuck the police. Really? <laughs> Fuck the police? Okay. <laughs> well, if, if you insist. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. This guy's getting wow, way too into it. expression from this guy. <laughs> I'm just going to say. He's definitely thinking of Tesla. It's quite a nice ending. Normally with these kind of films, the... Uh, the guy here, in the third party here in the stories, they normally, like, die or they get assimilated or they turn into ghosts or whatever. This guy's just having a buggy. Yeah, this guy gets yeah. membership to the Monster Club and he gets to have a little dance with Vincent. And all he had to do was hear all some right. very... All he had to do was hear some very far-fetched, nonsensical stories. <laughs> that may or may not be yeah. a little bit rubbish. <laughs> yes. Well, again, that's a typical Friday night if you're not having your face melted. <laughs> That is a very dangerous power to have. You can never whistle a tune ever again. True. The clientele of this club. <laughs> Everyone's so old. <laughs> Why would they be... No, it's just the masks that are old. <laughs> Why would they be dancing to, like, the pretty things and, you know, to Powell or whoever? <laughs> <laughs> or wank, I tell you wank... now, Car 6 7 went mad after three minutes. <laughs> Can you imagine a load of pensioners coming 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 up next? Wang Chung with their new hit. <laughs> oh, I fucking love them. <laughs> I can't wait till Huey Lewis and the News hit next week. <laughs> well, you know how many old people like go into random movies because they have a pass to go to the movies and they end up watching like ninety eight percent porn. <laughs> oh yeah, only ni- only ninety eight. <laughs> yeah, I am very familiar with these demographics. <laughs> Yes, my, I am too. <laughs> Freeze frame credits. Woo-hoo. Is what I assume yes. is about to happen. <laughs> or fade to black. No, fade out, wow. Mm, oh, there we classy. go, there we go. <laughs> I, was just, yes. I, I, know, I know I just said this, but I just like the way that like these films normally end with like, oh, and by the way, now you've heard the stories, you are cursed forever. And this one, it's just like, oh, you just, you've heard these stories now. Here's a drink. <laughs> And a buggy. Here's, exactly. here's a drink. Annual membership is three hundred pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it, it might be.
might be a glass of blood, but hey, you know what? As long as you have fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fu- it's a fun monster movie. Fun for the family. Yes, it was very fun. Oh yeah. Well, the what? music kind of reflects the attitude of this, and it's pretty freaking awesome. Oh hey, what? based on Transylvanian folk melodies. That's always a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> is that like when they do like the conjuring 2 and it's like based on a true story <laughs> just to make it yeah, sound so only this spooky. is much more based on truth mm. than the conjuring series this is based on true story this yes. is uh this is actually a documentary oh well hey there you go peter jessup director of photography <laughs> so who what's your favorite monster in this lovely art painting i personally am being drawn to medusa on the right who is clearly having some kind of breakdown yeah well you know she just turned her favorite boyfriend into stone and you know she's having a hard time with it uh, i see what you did there giving a boyfriend a hard time he turned her to stone i'm like i'm liking the goth yes. chick in the lower left <laughs> yeah oh, I can always that. a good choice I can dig that. what about the cockroach on drums oh there you go nice I'm a rather a big fan of the uh, top hat gents up in the upper left-hand corner there. Oh, yes. Looking very fancy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I don't dress up often myself, so it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about the couple in the lower left hand. They look a little creepy, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're the kind who would buy you a drink in a bar and ask to say that you looked really handsome. Yeah. Well, that in the beaker in front of them makes me think of Rufy. Oh, is that why it had the ITV thing at the start? From ITC yes. Entertainment. Right. Very true. Oh, Very I was true. confused because that nice. really confused me at the beginning. <laughs> it continued to confuse me throughout. <laughs> yeah, it, I believe it originally aired on ITV. Um, it did have a cinema run and then it went to ITV um, shortly after. Mm. Uh, what a bizarre, um, okay. bizarre yeah. turn of events. Right, Very much so. so. So, that was the Monster Club. So that so so that was octop that was octopussy. Well, I think it was I think it was a pretty good film. Roger Moore's very good in it. Uh, Maud Adams turns good good turn. Stephen Burkoff, <laughs> what a crazy guy. And uh, the helicopter fight was good. I give it eight out of ten. Dan. Um. Okay, so the Monster Club. <laughs> um, Nineteen eighty one. What what, what what are you talking about? Monster what? What are you talking about? Runtime of one oh, no. hour thirty seven minutes forty four seconds. A five bag I- of popcorn film. If ever I saw one. I was watching a different Agreed. stream. <laughs> oh no, you were watching Octopussy rather than the Monster was, Club. And it just... I, had, I had Octopussy on on my other TV. <laughs> so, <laughs> somehow my comments synced up perfectly despite that. Hey, um, well, you know, so, you take it when you can get it. We'll, we'll do the round table. So, Triv, what did you think of the Monster Club? Oh, I give it Vincent Price out of 10, which is probably like a 12 or 13 out of 10. It was so much fun. Um... The the creep the weird monster masks that that whole bit was cute. It, it it was it was cheeky, you know. It didn't take itself too seriously. Like you said, it's it's a monster movie or an anthology series that didn't rely on you know total and utter downness to have fun. It kind of reflects that a- aspect of the eighties. Absolutely, I think that's a pretty pretty nice summary there. Um, yeah, no, I'd agree with that. I think um, that this film is just is just nice, silly fun. It's charming. It it. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It it does what it needs to do, and I think the most crucial thing is, whilst it might not necessarily technically be up to snuff, it's entertaining, and that's you know all Very that much. all that it really needs. Plus, that soundtrack is totally kick-ass, and um, it's one of those few <laughs> oh, yeah. vinyl records that have eluded me through the years. I've been trying desperately to get the original vinyl release of this thing, and it's just it's so expensive, and so few copies exist. But uh, if I ever do find it, I'll be a very happy boy. Well, you know, we'll do what we can. So if you if you know how to get the uh, Monster Club uh, LP, you know where to send it. T- hey, Turtle Man, Turtle Man 40 or whoever subscribed, send us a record. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're so, in charge because you subbed during this whole thing. It's all on you. <laughs> and Ben, what did you make of the Monster Club? Did you think it was an enjoyable thing or did you think uh, it was rubbish? Well, 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 Gene, I have to second the comments made earlier there. Uh, in that I thought it was pretty good because normally like um, these anthology films are sort of up their own arse a bit and take themselves a bit seriously and this one is just kind of goofy like and it's it's like I was saying like I was I was very very pleasantly surprised that John Carradine didn't end up in some like dark twist of now you must stay in the club forever and your soul is trapped because you've heard these stories it's just like no you heard these stories and you know let's have a monster mash 
it's just it's just nice. Yeah. It's like a very it's, um, it's a nice film. It's something you could probably put on on an afternoon. Maybe if you didn't have the stripper skeleton scene in, you could probably put it on in the <laughs> middle of the afternoon on ITV4 and just have a very uh, enjoyable bank holiday afternoon. Absolutely. Absolutely, I agree. Um, and The Monster Club is obviously available on DVD and Blu-ray through Network. I think it's also on Shudder, um, so you can check it out there if you want. Um, Triv, thank you so much for joining us on today's show. It's it's literally made this, and we're very grateful to have you. Um, but for the viewers at home who've maybe made it this far, where exactly would they be able to find your wares? Uh, well, you can find me on YouTube at Trivial Theatre. Uh, that's spelled E-R, not R-E, because even in the presence of you excellent gents, I am not that fancy. Um, <laughs> you can also find me on uh, Twitter. I'm Trivia underscore Chick. Um, that's Chick without a K, so it's probably more chic than Chick, but... Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, otherwise you can see me here on this amazing commentary. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, gents. It was so much fun. It's been a delight to have you quite genuinely. And we'll make sure to pop links in the description to your, your YouTube channel and your, your various fairs. Um, and I do highly recommend you go and check Triv out. She's got some fantastic videos. Um, really top class lash. She does ah, some cheers. brilliant stuff. Um, and uh, to see us out on this comedy dining experience, Ben. <laughs> oh, thanks. No pressure. <laughs> well, I'm not we going to say anything now. Could... You've got to end this. I'm not saying anything. Um, Starting well, now. We could, we could sing a song like the film does, and I could just try and like I could try and like copy strike the video at this point. Um, <laughs>